afternoon, everybody. Wow, those, those lights are super strong. I know you are, there are people here, but uh, please don't get sleepy, right, after lunch. Just, I need some feedback from you, right? Do not get sleepy. So some, some, some laws, some comments is, is, will be always uh, welcome, right? So uh, I need your, your help for starting. Uh, I need to know how many of you know a little bit about TDD. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check how many of you. Oh, that's interesting. Majority of you, let's say, yeah, more than majority of you know a little bit about TDD. That's great. Please raise your hand because there is another question coming, which is for those that you already know what's TDD, how many of you are still using it in your day-to-day -day job? From 50% of the room, let's say right now, few hands, 10 people more or less, okay, so it looks like, it looks like I have to do something about this session because if all of you will still continue raising your hand, it looks like then I'm done, right? The reason about this, this talk is about explaining the basics about TDD, the advantages and the advantages about using TDD and what's the benefit about the, the starting with the test versus finishing the code with your test. And I hope I will be able to share some tips with you. So even if you have a face like this guy, right, please do not run away. I will try to show you so also a live coding example. And so yeah, that's the more or less the idea, to, to, to make it more or less happy and, and funny to, to you. Uh, I was born in Barcelona, but I was in, introduced uh, half Galician, half Catalan, and, and, and everybody, well, when I was young, uh, told me, my family, that the first thing you have to do is to do, say thank you, because you have to, uh, probably a lot of things to do, a lot of things in your mind. So thank you for coming here. Thank you, Codemotion, for having me here. You have here two QR codes. Uh, this is the presentation, and the other one is the paper form. If you want, I'm going to share it later on, so don't worry if you cannot grab the, uh, the QR code right now. Um, I already presented, so I'm, I'm Nacho. I work at Dynatrace, a principal software engineer. We wrote code for monitoring other code, which is a crazy thing, I would say. And I'm a fan of uh, doing simple stuff and doing clean code. It's something really interesting to do, but difficult, I would say, to apply. I'm also the founder of Barcelona Java User Group and another conference called Developers Barcelona, Developers Conference Barcelona. I became Java champion as well two years ago, I think. And uh, I was able to run marathons some years ago by the mountains. I still am able to run, but not at the same speed, you know. I'm getting old. And uh, also, I'm, you can contact me using Twitter or uh, Mastodon. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, I will be really happy to contact with you. Everything I'm going to share here is based on my personal experience, everything that I learned from others. Or I've been working with other teams. So please take this into account. And. Um, the first question is as, as well for you. There are going to be just two more questions. The question is, can you please tell me how, as a developer, can peacefully sleep every single night? Every, just one word. Do you know which is how, what, what thing we have that help us to understand how to sleep peacefully every single night? Can somebody tell me just one word about it? Who? Test. Who, who said that? You have, a, you have an extra bonus. Yes. Thank you very much. That's exactly the reason why uh, we can sleep every single night, right? We, we build tests, and then we understand that, that some behavior is already covered, and we understand that this is at least, no? This is at least working as expected, and then we can put a green mark, right? Something is working, and then do our, the rest of the things, and then go asleep every single night. That's amazing. But tests, writing tests is boring. Probably many of you will agree with me, no? Can, can you please raise your hand and say if you agree with boring testing? Or if it's something that you agree, uh, more or less people, a majority of them, no, half of them. So you're not actually sure that if it's boring or boring. That's great. But then, talking about testing, uh, imagine that we can design a mechanism, no? To deliver software that we know that is working and deliver portions, no? Portions of code that we already check that are working as expected, or at least the behavior that we want are working or is working as we want. This is more or less what Ken Beck uh, probably thought when he discovered uh, TDD, when he was uh, creating the first X unit framework in 1994. And then later on, and some, some years later, he created the, the, the write, written the book about TDD in 2002. Uh, so it looks like TDD is not something new. It's a technique that was created more than 22 years ago. It's not a fancy thing, right? But it has been a very useful technique. 
with TDD, you can basically design or use a simple process that helps you to write software in step by step and a straightforward way. Uh, you can find the text earlier because as you write your test, you're gonna identify that there is something that is changed and then you can change your code. So any kind of defect while you are testing and you're creating the code and changing your production code, you can understand there are some tests on some behavior that you forgot and then suddenly you're gonna detect uh, defects earlier. In the same way, you are able to, to identify regression errors. When you execute something and then you understand you broke other signatures in another class, another component, you can do that. It is much, much easier than waiting any other mechanism when you arrive up to production. And because of this safety net that you have building tests, you will have your software is going to be easier to refactor, easy to change, because you have a lot of tests around it. It's, for TDD, I would say that it's like a, a mechanism that guides you, right, like a light. Uh, guys, you how, how somebody will use your component. If you build a component and deliver it to somebody else, while you have your test already being created, you actually understand how your behave, you, your component will behave. And this is like guide you how somebody else will use it in the correct or in the wrong way, which is another beautiful thing about testing. And tests are really live documentation. If you maintain your test as you're, te you're uh, building your software in production, you will see how your tests are evolving with your production code, which is also a really nice thing. Uh, the, the, the two things I have to mention about it is uh, it's likely that you have less, less uh, bugs and also your development cost will be lower. I included here two links. One is about a case study that ABM, uh, IBM did uh, many years ago. And he, they detected that the teams that were applying TDD, they have 40% uh, uh, less bugs than the teams that were not using TDD. And the other article is a kind of a compilation of our, uh, articles uh, where you can see um, uh, public administrations and public private organizations identifying more or less the same thing, that the teams that are using TDD, they are likely to have less bugs, which is also an interesting thing. But probably some of you, if not all of you, you will have a face like this, say, hey, Nacho, <laughs> wait, you are now right now selling me the idea that TDD is going to solve all my problems. Well, this is not exactly what I'm saying because uh, TDD has some disadvantages. It's not so easy to start. This is the first thing. Uh, you might find many locations, many resources in the internet, but n some of them are not that good as I, I expect. And the, it has a learning, high learning curve. Depending on how your code is and your, your uh, let's say, skills as a software engineer, you will see how difficult it is to try to apply. In, so in, in the end, it can be a large investment in your team, depending on how good are you and the software uh, patterns and developing things and not making a, a high, uh, let's say, a cooperation within, within, uh, within your code. And it requires time and effort depending on your team. So it is something that you have to, let's say, be aware of it. At the same time, it's a practice that is easy to forget. Like if you go, I don't know, and climb mountains, if you don't go for many years, probably you're gonna lose that, that ability and probably you have to repeat this same, uh, let's say, practice again. It provokes resistance for the people that, for example, they try to use in their day-to-day -day job and was not able to do it. They became like the people, oh no, this is not gonna work because I tried uh, many times in uh, katas, in exercises, in simple projects, and it's okay, but while you are going into a real production environment, a real a, a scenario, it's impossible to do it because whatever. And it can be also corrupted to lead to the high level of cohesion, or uh, sorry, high level of code coverage that many people said. And, and it's not done that way, TDD. It's a mechanism that basically helps you to write your production code, but first you create your test. That's the reason why at the end you have a high level of code coverage, but not the other way around. It's not the same to having you know, high expectations of, high, of code coverage without not needing to, uh, not applying to TDD. So uh, different approaches that are not really uh, related. And at the end it's like all of these arguments um, says that uh, TDD and master it is really difficult thing, right? At least in my experience. And many of you will have a face like this saying, oh, still I don't understand how it is, how is this thing about practicing TDD, and what, is, what, what does it seek? You know, what, what is it doing about, what, what it looks for? And the idea about TDD, I will normally do this analogy. You know? So many of you, well, depending on the age, uh, many of you started to write code some time ago, you know, like driving a bicycle, and now what I'm trying to convince you is that you have to try to drive a different bicycle but it's gonna be funny, it's gonna be entertaining, it's gonna be hard for you at the very beginning. But at the end, I'm, let me tell you, you have better arguments to try to still using it. 
And what it is looking for is to kind of a puzzle, trying to help you to build components and modules that could be, let's say, easily uh, re replaceable, right? When you have a component and you can replace it with another, and those are actually uh, building in the, in the way that this is really straightforward, and at the same time, you can actually identify how all of them are connected without not having to tangle all of them. So it's a kind of a way for building better modularized software. Many of you know probably that diagram. This is the typical diagram of the process of TDD. No more than three steps. First, write a test that is failing, the red approach. Watch it failing, by the way. The second step is just having this picture that this test is not working. Uh, let's see how we can put this uh, test in green. Let's make it work, let's say. And the third one is to improve. Having this picture, having this code that we have in production and testing, how we can improve it, how we can make it better. So you know more than these three steps, I try to summarize it like this is the thing that we want to do, the, write the test in red, it's something that we don't have, right? So the specification that I want to create. The other step, the second one is, to, okay, we have this that we want to achieve, how we can do that? Let's do the second step, second step is make it green, let's pass this red uh, step to green, and then afterwards, let's go back for a second and say, okay, we have these classes here, we have this code copy and pasted, can we make it better, can we do some refactor, can we apply some uh, pattern here? And with this approach, you will basically fulfill the entire process of TDD. Um, I will also recommend you to learn and practice uh, let's say inside projects, personal ones, uh, proof, proof of context, things that are actually not uh, happening normally in your day-to-day -day job because then, you know, you have some deadlines on commitments, your boss will tell you, hey, you have to do this, you have to deliver it for, by tomorrow. If you are not used to it, I will not try to recommend you. And also I will recommend you also to try uh, pair programming uh, with all of you. How many of you, by the way, know about pair programming? That's another question for you, I think it's the last one. Hey, many, many people, and still, how, how many of you, maintain your raise your hand, how many of you are practicing pair programming every day, or majority of your days? So probably 10 to 12, 20 people as maximum, okay. So then I think there still is a, is a need to talk about pair programming. Probably another talk that could be interesting. It's an extreme programming practice where you have two persons, like the picture that you can see here, and you have two persons focus on a single problem. No, in a, in a TV, in an online camera, it doesn't matter. But at the end, you have two persons. One is the driver and the other is the observer. And the two persons are focused on the same problem. Why somebody's write, written on the things that we have to achieve in the short term, what we have to deliver, this test that we have to pass it through, whatever. And the other person is the observer who is taking care about the full, the full picture, let's say, saying if we are going to go in the wrong direction, the good direction. And with this approach, you have those two roles that you have to switch. With this approach, basically, when you go and we have at the same time writing the code and then reviewing the code, which is a more natural way to create code, but, but uh, driving by testing at the same time, somebody will review your code at the same time. So it will help you to understand how your colleague's brain is working, which is also a very nice idea about pair programming. At the same time, you're writing code, you're reviewing it, and also delivering the code in the fastest way it's possible. Recommending content, I have, I have to recommend many things, but uh, here you have, I put it some links about the basics, right? Martin Fowler wrote many, many, many stories and many articles around what's the basics around testing, what means test level, what is a mock, what is a stop, what is the practical test pyramid, right? Why is it important to start with a great volume of unit tests and then continue with integration tests and then finally end with acceptance tests. Dave Farley, James Shore, and Jason Goldman, I put it here because they have really nice content talk, talking about uh, testing, talking about TDD, talking about quality of software and they are delivering also as well a lot of good content. They have, I think it was James uh, Shore who built a series about TDD in JavaScript. Jason Gorman did the same thing with Java, so depending on your language, you can go and, and have a look on, on all of those. And about so, um, the, and books around TDD, I, I have here four. Uh, growing object-oriented software guided by test. I will say this is the first one I will try. The second one is the test-driven development, a practical guide, more focused on graphical user interfaces, I would say. And the third one, uh, test driven uh, developed by example by Ken Beck, probably a bit idealistic in my opinion. The last one is the Yard of Unit Testing, uh, more focused on C Sharp, but it's still a very valid uh, book around uh, test unit testing. Many of you probably will have this face right now, or are you sleepy? Uh, so I, I prefer you are wake up uh, still. Uh, so I, Probably I'm gonna show you, yeah, the, the code, and then you will see how this works. Um, some good habits before, I will try to recommend you first check that the test that you're writing is actually failing, because if you write the first test and this test is green, there's a test that you can skip it, you, know? you don't need it. 
go for the next, uh, in the, the next behavior. Another recommended thing is normally is to have only one assertion. Pretty normal, uh, let's say, uh, recommendation, but many people are not used to it. And if have only one reason to fail helps you to understand what's, uh, what's going on, what happened in this case. And the last thing is to write the assertion first. I'm going to explain you in a second why it's important to write the assertion first. I hope it's, you can see it very well. Uh, right now, this is a naming convention that we, or I normally use in the teams I'm working with. And it's this stupid idea to put a suffix uh, that is basically ending with should. With this idea, basically, what we want is to force the people to uh, describe the things that they want to cover later on. So the name of the test explains behavior. What should do is basically, if you continue the phrase, is I have to do something. I have to manage something. I have to parse something. I have to fail in case of something. But not, 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 not explaining have to throw something, no, because this is a pure internal definition. And I don't want to change the name of the test every single time that I change the exception or the return of code or whatever. So if you collapse those namings, basically you have kind of a story. You don't need to know what is a session replay resource beacon in this case, uh, parser, but you already know which kind of scenarios are covered. What happens if uh, the beacon is not valid? What happens when the content is somehow, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this is a way that you can much better understand the behavior of a person, uh, of a class, and how what's, what's going on with it, right? Without not having to understand the, the details about it. The test creation order I already commented before. This is the way I try to or like to um, build software. Uh, first, the name of the class, the shoot that I mentioned for the unit testing, right? The second is the name of the method. Uh, I put it here an example, return empty state, when no beacons received in the last period. Here, the third step, uh, define what you want to check. Now you can tell me, oh, but the rest of the code that you have, uh, your ID will tell you there's no state, there's no previous state, that's true. But what I want to know, when, when I specify the test I want to implement, the third step is understand exactly what I want to achieve with this test. Is okay, I have this result, for sure, this must be exactly what I want to check. Now, in this case, is a state that has to be equal to previous state. Well, probably in this case, must be much better to say a state uh, is equal to an empty state, right? And the, the next step is basically to trigger the code. I have to trigger something to arrive to the conclusion that this state is the one that I desire. I want to check that this is the result, right? And the, le the last thing is to do the setup. In this case, I need a repository that is connected to the calculator and has to do something because depending on the date or something. So these are, let's say, the things that are related that are uh, needed for this, this scenario. So as you can see, the order is going from the bottom going up. It's a bit on the other way around, no? that's a picture I saw you before. It's like, okay, doing the, the things in the other way around. Uh, I, can show you, I can show you how to do it in a, in a live coding that I'm gonna do right now, and I hope I will have enough time to do it. So yeah, first warning, uh, as a live coding, you can imagine things can go wrong, uh, but yeah, uh, let's do it. Let's, let's see what happened. Um, I need some water. Yeah, let's do this. <laughs> hmm. Problem I need you are aware of a, a type of a business related to rents films over the internet, right? And you just suddenly arrive to a company that is, they are doing these kind of things. And they tell us they want to provide a service that can provide a list of recommended films um, for, you, for, your, for our users, right? And they, they want to build a list, you have to build, sorry, a list of films based on particular genre. And by default, the result must be ordered by average rate. You know, the users will say, okay, if I like the movie from one to 10, if I like the most, a 10, if I don't like it at all, one. No? And every single user will add the vote, et cetera. And a film must contain some properties, no? like the IDE, title of the year, when it was published, the tax, and also the genres. And here we have as well an example. Here I have the GitHub with the code. And let's see if I'm able to do it. Oh, okay. Uh, let me see. Okay, now I can see in both the screens. Where is my cursor? Hello, cursor, here. Okay, now. Fantastic. So, how we can start? Anybody can help me? Are you still awake? Yes, yes. okay. So, how I can start? With a test, yes, with a test, of course. This is the way that we have to work in here. So, film recommendation service, they said, no? Film recommendation service. Okay, can you see it, right? Much better if I do this. 
No, not in that way. Oh my God. Why not move it to, the, to this slide when I was here? No, let me see. Okay. Film recommendation services. This is the name and the, the pattern and the, and the method that they want to pro or we have to provide, right? So let's, oh, again, I cannot see it duplicated. Interesting. Okay. Let's see right now. Uh, so, as I mentioned, we have to try no, to create the test. Film recommendation service. By the way, I'm going to do it in Java. Uh, I'm more used to Java as I lead of the Java user group. Um, I'm going to show you, by the way, all the things I'm going to do. You can always think about using the proper naming, the proper packaging, the proper things. Because of the time that I have, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be faster, right? And also, the other thing I, I have to say is that for every single step that I can do, Imagine that you can use Git for any particular resource uh, or source code manager where you can actually step by step do the commit. No, testing green, testing, testing working, refactoring, et cetera, et cetera, because otherwise the demo is going to take a bit longer. So I'm going to start with this, and what I have to do is to create a test, right, that can help me to drive the solution that we want. And they told us the recommendation service must, uh, must call the films by genre with this parameter, that must be the genre, right? and then try to use it. So what I have to do, let's define a method, or a, method, a test that can say, let's run uh, themes, um, filter it by genre, um, order it, order it by average rate. Hmm? Average rate. It is clear, it is, do you understand what we want to do? Rest, right, no? Um, so the assertions that I normally use are the ones that are provided by Acerche, really comfortable for me. And I'm going to start by the things I commented. After creating the, the, man, the name of the method, the next thing is to do the assertion. The assertion will be something like, what's the name of the, the recommendation? Well, it doesn't matter. Uh, film recommendation, recommendation service, uh, films by, they say films by, films by genre. Films by genre, and we can use the same example, science, Fiction, and this must be equal to something, because otherwise, what, what we have to serve. So now, <clears throat> I have to think what we have, what, what what I want to do here. Okay, what I want to do is to start having a test that can help me to provide or to describe and implement the solution. For doing that, I can imagine that I have to return some films. So what if we put something like expected films? Well, for me, something like this could work. No, after calling the service with this. Um, let's say genre, I can return some list of expected films. Okay, so uh, let's do it like this. This must be a list of films, right? Something like this. Otherwise, this is not going to work. And this probably my ID will tell me that this is something that you have to initialize. And this here, the same thing. I don't have this film recommendation service. And as you can see, it's telling me something that, hey, you don't have this, and then the same thing in here. Uh, Altentor for everything is a super comfortable thing for me because I, I'm getting old and I don't know, I don't want to, let's say, waste my time for this. Um, as you can see, I have a few things that I have to complete because otherwise my test is not going to work. Uh, so I have to create this, uh, this uh, element that is my, my, um, my class that defines, I put it like this because then probably might get much easier to read. Here you can see on the right, oh, sorry, down the production code, and on the top, um, the testing code. As you can imagine, this is another good tip that I normally recommend you when you are practicing with somebody else. If you, you have big screens, right? Even for Java naming classes, well, you have big screens. So you can split your screen and put a testing in one side and the production code in the other side. And then at the same time, you're going to be able to review the code in production and in testing, which is a great idea as well. And um, yeah, I was trying to fulfill the test because the test is not working. So let's import the thing that are required and let's create the class. Yes, this is not a testing, this is production code, right? Let's, like the film one. So you can see here I have my production code in the main one and the testing code in the test, right? So I'm gonna move it this again to down because we have production down. Probably I have to think about doing it the other way around, but it doesn't matter. And now uh, here I have to complete because this is not correct, right? And this must be, oops, this must be genre. Otherwise, this is not going to work. And let's scroll fill because it's not compiling, right? So now what's happening? I think it should compile, right? Let's, let's see. Oh, I'm missing a return. Oh, of course, because this is not already implemented. I have to throw something. Where are you? Here. So if I run right now the test, what is going to happen? It's going to fail. Yes, it's going to fail. Why? 
because I have initialized this service as expected. No? This is something that is normal. My ID is telling me, hey, you try to execute something, but this is not okay. So let's initialize it properly for Java. Normally, we create jobs, uh, sorry, uh, uh, objects, and uh, we have to do the same thing with the list. But let's go step by step. As you can see here, I have some exception in here. You will say, okay, you did something, uh, you, you, you do, do, did a here a, a trick, no? which is actually provoking that the test is failing. Yes, basically this is, this is what I want. This test is uh, actually helping me to drive the solution. Just right now I'm only uh, executing this. And as you can see, I'm here triggering the production code, right? With my test, so more or less it's working, but I think it's not completed. It's not completed because I don't have any anything to say about the list, right? So the list does not contain any kind of uh, useful information. And in fact, if I trigger something like this, I will not like to derive anything from this behavior because there's no behavior if a list is null, completely null. So what I want to have, or what will be my idea, is to have a list of films and to check that uh, this valid list of films with their ID, with their um, uh, title, with the year, the tax, etc. then I can do a nice comparison about the list of films that I expect. So this is something I can do. And how I can do that, I'm gonna copy and paste code. Don't do it in your in your day-to-day -day job, please, but this is something for the demo purposes. I'm gonna copy and paste two constants just to show you how stupid it is to create uh, two films. Here, I, I hope you can see it. Uh, Matrix and Star Wars, so episode four. Those are good movies for me, I like both of them. And those are uh, science fiction movies as well, right? So we have here the film of Star Wars episode four, um, the year when it was published, the list of tags, the list of uh, um, uh, titles, etc. So I guess this is some two constants that I can use. And here I have the definition of films. Let me show you down what we have right now. Uh, right now is not valid, even if I put it an M, it should not be an enum. But as you can see, the definition of uh, the type right now of a film is actually the definition of having, let me show you, uh, having an IDE, a title, year, uh, the tax and the genre. So nothing really complicated. Let me try first to copy uh, this record. Don't do it at home again, please. This is a pure example. And then I'm gonna use those constants. Because those constants, I know I'm gonna use it later on, you will see it. Um, I'm gonna create this typical object mother for helping me in the idea of copying those constants. But again, please don't do it at home. It's for demo purposes. I hope it is recorded. Um, yeah, so here I can use those uh, uh, constants I mentioned, right? So let's put it here, matrix, come on, Nacho. And Star Wars, Star Wars. Hey, something appeared here, oops. Hey, where are you, here? Yes, and this should be Star Wars episode, oh, episode four. Let me see if it's able to uh, put it with, no, it was okay, come on. Uh, yes, yes. Okay, so I hope it is more clear now. I have now a list of films that should work before I haven't had the proper, let's say, uh, the proper definition of a test because I haven't had uh, previously any kind of list that could be valid for me. And right now I'm triggering this unsupported exception. So now I have to think how to solve this. And for me here, and I talk to many teams like this, uh, I can do here something like this and return the films that already know that are already in the other, uh, in the other file. And why this should work? Because basically I'm returning a hard-coded value. With this I can go to production and put this as a hard-coded value because probably somebody else, when we are working in a, in a company, you might work with somebody else who needs that for you. And then they're waiting for this. So, so, so you can actually do that and then commit and then submit it because you will have in the same next stage somebody, hey, you have something available for you, it's a hard-coded value, but you can start using it. And this is something that can deliver software faster than in the other way around. And you will say, okay, but this is not helping me to deliver anything about for some this, this software. Yes, but at the same time, I can have a commit and deliver it before arriving to the final solution. So it's a first step, they can do it. I'm not gonna do it right now because, because of the time. So now I'm gonna think about how to solve this and to try to improve or to, to solve a solution what will be something really or similar to a, what we could have in, in a production system. In a production system, probably in a company that the startup that we were talking about, uh, they will have a source where they can find or we can find the, the films, no? And some of our colleagues came to us and say, no, we have a database 
uh, let's imagine, right? Uh, so they have a database, and all the films and the users, etc., they are saved in the database. Okay, so this could this could mean that we have to go and to connect to a database and to see how this connection works, map the value and the results of the database, getting back and the result, giving the result to the service. Because while I'm trying to solve this test, I'm thinking I don't want to, let's say, in a in a the first service I've created just coupling the definition and the solution to uh, connect into a database right now from here. So probably what I can do is to see if there's a component or a piece that I can create that can do this work, no? connect to the database, get the information as I expect, map the results as I want, and then get it back to the service. I think it's a very common, no? a very common way to, to abstract the things and then put the responsibility in the components that I need. So let's do it like this. Let's use a repository. no? repository that can be something like this film repository and then can 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 we can call a method like could be like this uh, films by genre no? and then I can pass here the genre uh, but they said they said something about the order uh, the default uh, result must be ordered according to the average rate given to the films okay now is the average rate but as you can imagine tomorrow is another type of order. So now what I can do is to do something like this, create uh, a, a, an enum that can help me and say that this is the average rate and the way that now my uh, managers uh, ask about it. No? They want to have something that is the average rate. Okay, so let's create that and then see how we can solve that. And right now I have here the sort order, right? And now we, we should have is create a constant. If we go here, this, we have a new constant in here. Now, I, of course, I'm designing while I'm solving the test, which is a good idea. I'm thinking how uh, somebody else will start using it and at the same time hiding the complexity of going to the database and somewhere else. And here I have the film repository, but I don't have anything right now. For sure, it's a collaborator that the service right now will need. So let's put it as a field. Must be a field, but it's not a service. It's a film repository. Repository, come on. Yes, uh, so here, I have not created a class, uh, what I did, uh, film repository, so let's create the class, yes, film repository, must be a production code, here we have it, and what I did here, I haven't created that, okay, that's, that's all correct. So as you can see here, I have, let's put it, move this up a little bit, uh, here, I, as you can see, I have this film repository, this is the injection that I, I, I'm gonna do at some moment, and I decided that we're gonna call this method that's gonna help me, no? to create what I want to know, uh, connecting to the database and get this information. So I have here a, a, a genre, this is the sort order, and then uh, let's see what, it, what is going to happen. If I call this test that we were writing, remember that it's not working, and now I have the film repository that is null. Okay, what I have done basically is to move the responsibility to access to the database and to map the value somehow to a different component. And this component is the one that has to have the responsibility that I want. Perfect, so now, Normally, what I would like to know is to see how to solve this in a, in a better way. Now I can do many things. I can go and to connect to a real database and to here and put it in the testing, but I'm right now working on the, on, the, on the unit testing, so I don't want to connect to a real database because remember, we are on the film service uh, shoot, so it's a unit test against uh, the one that we are executing the test on the service side. I don't want to connect to a real database right now. What I can do right now is to initialize this repository no, because it's null, and I don't want to have the connection to the real database. So right now, what I have to do is to use it, right, as a as a dependency that I can use here and in the in the in the service. And here you can see my test is telling me, hey, you don't have this film repository. That's true. I don't want to right now connect to a real database. So what I'm gonna have to do is to basically mock this component. I don't want to use right now a, a, a database, a real connection to a database. And here, because we are Java and we love uh, annotations, right, we have to do something like this to mock properly and to initialize properly the service in the repository. So if I execute this again, we are gonna have a different result, I hope. Yes, so you can see the expected result is not the same that I have. Why? Well, I think it's be obvious, but let me show you. Uh, here is the result, the, 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 the test is expecting two films, but there was empty. The reason why is because I defined it that this component, the, the film repository, is not doing anything. I only, I only define it here in the line 14, that is a mock, but I haven't explained what, what they have to do in which cases, which are corner cases. So this is the thing I'm missing. I have to do the setup properly, you remember? 
So then, what I have to do is to do that the film repository, when it's called with science fiction, no, this is the example we are using, and with the sort order that we defined before, then must return the expected films. And now what do you think is going to work? Or what is going to happen if I compile and make two things correct? This is working. So now we have a, a unit test, and with this unit test, just one unit test, we created four classes. Two classes, one enum, et cetera. And here we have um, some data that we're already trying to define that the behavior of the service is actually working. So when the repository, this method of the repository is done, the service is, uh, let's say, working and is finished, so, or done, or job is done. Let me see if I have, I have enough time to do it. How we can progress on that? The best thing to do that, yes, to implement the repository and to use a test. Now the question is, do I need to, do I want to have right now a unit test or is another kind of test that I want? I want to have another kind of test. I want to connect to a real database to get the real connection, to get the information for that, and then connect and see that the information is returning in the proper way. So now, let's do that in that way. Let's put it the test up, you remember? Uh, where is the cursor to move this down? Here. Okay, and now what, what I want to do? What I don't to do is to basically return, uh, let's call it films, filter it by genre, and now I have something different, which is, is on ordered. I don't care right now about the um, order because the order is already provided to the method. So, and the next thing is to do the assertions. Assertions, answer that, film repository, uh, films by genre, and we're gonna use the same example, science fiction, why not? And the sort order, sort order, come on, you can. It must be the average rate, uh, then return, uh, up. Uh, oh, it must be equal to something. What am I doing, Nacho? Equal to, it must be uh, something related to expected films. Otherwise, what we are going to check. I don't know if you can see anything, but it's a bit complicated because I haven't imported that correctly. Uh, but as you can see, I have the film repository defined, the expectation of the test, I think is more or less okay, and here we have the same thing, the list of expected films that are not, let's say, properly initialized, and here I still have to do some imports to use my, my correct implementation. Here I don't have the film repository, let's create it, and here I'm gonna use the same thing, and here must be equal to, what I'm failing here is equal to, right? Okay, uh, so now I'm gonna add on demand and then uh, much, much easier to read now. So now if I try to execute this, the same result as before. I haven't fulfilled the test as expected because the, the repository is null. Let's try to initialize it properly, right? The result will be more or less the same. But now I'm triggering the production code as you can see and now I have to think about if this test is already filled correctly or not. I would say no because here, I only have the list of films as I have before, and it's not already, uh, let's say, defining the expected films that I want. So let's do it like this. Oops, cannot see. Now, uh, I can use Matrix in Star Wars as well. Star Wars, episode four. And now I expect that I can import this, yes, and import that, yes. And now I'm gonna try again. Again, I can try the, the, the running the test because it's a super cheap operation, it's a unit test, and does not, does not have any impact, let's say. Uh, 120 milliseconds took to execute right, right now this. So the idea of this uh, test is right now, I can fulfill right now the same as I commented before. Now I'm triggering the production code, and I know that this is, should be the way to implement the solution. So if you think a little bit that now we have to connect to a real database and to filter information by genre, and returning the order in a particular order, this is something that basically the databases do very well, right? So in that case, it's something that we can do with uh, an example with test containers. In Java, how many of you know test containers? Can you raise your hand? Not too many, not too many. Half of the, le less than half of the people. So test containers is a library that can help you to uh, run any particular container boot it up in your test environment and, to, and in your execution of your test, boot up a test conta a container, sorry, put it the image you want, inject the data that you want and then trigger all the tests against this, this uh, uh, container. Which means that after that, you can demonstrate that the connection to the database, the data you expect, et cetera, is working as expected. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go a little bit faster, but if I try to explain it uh, bad, I will try to make it work. So, uh, test container, how we, how we can use it? Here you can see an example. 
uh, our colleagues told us that we have to use a Postgres database. This is exactly the thing I'm doing here right now, instantiating a Postgres container, saying that we have to use this schema, this init that somebody will tell me which one it is, the definition that we have right now. We have to initialize and set up and start the, the, the container for right now, and then use the data source for the Java uh, stuff to connect to the real database. So remember that we had 120 milliseconds when it executed the unit test. Let's see right now how much time it will take. Aha, uh -huh. one second, almost two seconds. So by far, hundreds of magnitudes is lower than the unit test. Why? Well, because test containers probably is using the, its work and is trying to show uh, and to initialize the things properly. And this is, takes more time. That's why you have to take care about how, how many often you create a unit test versus a integration test. And as you can see, the failure is that it does not, cannot find the unit, the unit uh, SQL, which is the script that we know that we need. Some of our colleagues forgot to tell us uh, the definition and the model of the, of the database, but we have it here. I'm gonna copy it, but as I said, don't do it at home. Uh, so let, sh let me show you the model. So the model is not really complicated. It's a pure SQL database where we have the films with all the properties, ID, T, title, year, tax, genders, etc. The users on the other side, no, the people that will start voting for, for the films uh, with the name, surname when it was created, etc. And then the relationship with, two, with, with the two, no, the films and the users. Users on one side, films on the other, and the rate as, uh, as the result. So here we have some examples. We have uh, here the users, John, Mike, and Luke, and here we have the films, we have Matrix, Star Wars, we have here up. If we look for science fiction, I put it in, in, in two, two films that are science fiction, right? But another one, a third one, which is, is nice as well, up, I can re totally recommend you to have a look on this, on this film, but it's not a science fiction movie, so uh, definitely we sh it should not be included in here. And here we have this, the, the results. So we have uh, 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 Star Wars, uh, no, Matrix, who has an 8.3, and here we have uh, uh, Star Wars, who has a, eight, a 7, and Up, who has a 9. But th this 9 is not going to work because, as, I, as you have seen, uh, uh, Up doesn't, ha doesn't include the science fiction, uh, um, uh, let's say, uh, genre, sorry. So here I'm going to copy the definition. I'm going to execute the test again. And if I execute the test again, again, it's Took a little bit more, but now I'm triggering the, the production code. So this test container is already working. I already put it at the, the container, and then I'm going to try to connect to the database. For solving that, uh, I'm going to use this example, this code that you can see here that is no more. I'm going to copy paste it that for the time for the time being. And uh, as you can see, it's no more than joining with pure Java, it's SQL sentences, joining two tables, and connecting uh, the two tables by filtering by genre, the parameters that we have on the top, and then using the order that this was provided. So the order must be the one that this was provided. And there, for the result that I have received, just map the results using the read method that I need. Basically, mapping every single field that we have on the table that we have the films to the proper object that is the film. Nothing really fancy. Let me copy this. If uh, now the cursor is not working, why? Okay, now. Uh, yes, so let me copy here. I'm running out of time, but let me see what I can do. The, the name of this is the same, yes. So let's do it like this. Let's remove that. And here, uh, the things about copy and pasting, right? I forgot to do to add this variable, which is data source. Data source is this one, data source. Uh, not that one. Yes, that one. And I have to import it. Let's execute the test again. And this is the thing that I'm missing. I, because I copy the name, and of course, I forgot to copy the correct name, probably. Uh, Feynman Jerry, OK. That's the beautiful thing about copy and pasting things. As you can imagine, right now, all the tests are failing because I copy and rename the file or the name as I didn't have to do. So I by general, let me see now, the same thing again. That's the beauty of copy and pasting, right? And here, now, if I try to do the thing, I have a film, a, a, a null, because the data source, as you can see here, the data source, I'm triggering the, correct, uh, the production code, but the data source is not working. Why? Because I haven't injected properly. Let's do that, and let's, let's do this, and with this I'm gonna finish. Let's inject that properly here. The, we don't have the data source, but in the testing, you remember I injected the test container and defined the da data source. This is the data source I have to connect in here and I have to put it in here and then execute the test. So now, if everything is okay, 
yes, I have the test already working. It took a bit more time because of the integration test. Now the last test is to execute all of these things with cold coverage, which is another beautiful tool that not, not many of us are using. And I'm gonna show you the result in here. As you can see, in less than 20 minutes, uh, we have created an example using integration tests, using unit tests, and using tools like test container, et cetera, with almost arriving to 100% of code coverage, which I think is a beautiful result, but at least we have some, some results that are not actually, some scenarios that are not actually taken into account. I don't know if you can see it clearly, but here we have some sections that are not are in red, right, on the, on the code coverage level. It's because our, our tests are not taking into account right now what happens if the connection fails to the database or the SQL sentence is not correct. It's not important as well, but we can, we can finish it in here. Um, and I think with this result, I think we can finish the presentation. Uh, where we can find flag from the current, yes, yes, that's it. And I'm gonna finish by explaining or remembering, uh, I hope I was able to show you how with TDD and a bit amount of time, we can design and use a mechanism to design and develop software in an effective way. And it's difficult, I know, to adapt it and to maintain these mechanics, but it, I think it's even difficult, it has some benefits. It is worth to, to give it a try. It, will help you to have less bugs and to have uh, less cost uh, to maintain when you are building your software and maintaining your software. I share some tips. I hope some of them can, you can apply and I think some of them are really useful, at least for the teams I've been working with, and try to pair. In my experience, pairing with somebody else will help you to understand uh, how other things, how the, the, the code is evolving and how this 3D can actually be your day-to-day -day job. And they, this is it. I mean. TDD is no more than practice, 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 and then understanding and realize it integrally how to do it properly. And this is it. Thank you. <laughs>